Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about the fabulous Johannes Vermeer, a Dutch Baroque artist of the 17th century. I'm sure many of you have heard of him and his works before, but maybe not, so I hope that this presentation is both interesting and informative. He only has 36 surviving paintings, so I would argue that all of them are quite notable, but even still I tried to pick a few that were particularly interesting or well known. I hope you enjoy the presentation. First, I'm going to provide a bit of context to Vermeer's work by recounting his life. Delft, the Netherlands, was a prosperous city while Johannes was growing up, known for its textile industry and large looming medieval structures. Vermeer's father was a weaver and businessman. The family purchased an inn called the Mechelen in the market square, and Johannes not only inherited this new business from his father, but also an art dealership. So from an early age, Vermeer was well connected with the art world. So after marriage to Catherine Bones and converting to Catholicism, which will be important later because he does a lot of biblical works, he will move in with his mother-in-law, Maria Thinswell. And Maria has um, many different connections in the art world, including some cousins who are um, pretty prosperous artists themselves. So again, he has that connection. Not much is known about his early art career or his mentors or his teachers. Um, but his absence from Delft has been noted, and it's likely that he traveled, like many artists, to places like Amsterdam, where he would discover Rembrandt, to Italy and Florence, where he would discover Caravaggio, and all of those things later show up in his work. So after these travels, he comes back to Delft, and he starts um, in what is called genre paintings. And genre paintings are like interior, domestic life, and those are what he's really going to become famous for. So he has different influences like Leonard Brahmer, who was a close personal friend of Vermeer's and an advocate for his work. Um, he was well connected to the monarchy, and he also was well known for his biblical and mythological pieces, which again, Vermeer will take from. And then uh, Carel Fabritius was also a friend of Vermeer, um, and he was known for his pensive works and perspective, which Vermeer will definitely take on later. And both of these people um, were really well known in Delft and in the Netherlands. So Vermeer doesn't really receive world renown for his artwork until after his death, but he did um, receive local fame. So he's very successful at selling paintings to private collectors in the area. But it isn't until um, after the French invasion of Holland and Vermeer's financial ruin um, and all of these hardships and after his death that these paintings will be discovered and recognized as being very valuable. So now I'm going to go over a couple of the themes and elements that we'll see in Vermeer's work. So first, daily life. Vermeer is most famous for his genre paintings. So these are paintings like landscapes, like paintings of the interior, of domestic life and domestic work, which is a sharp contrast to what we've seen in different Baroque works. Uh, he doesn't include biblical figures, mythological figures in his later genre paintings. And actually, he finds a certain harmony in this, in the daily life, in the magic, and sort of the godliness that he finds in the daily domestic struggle of normal people. And that's what he ultimately decides to picture. Women are usually the subject of his works, which again is a contrast to what we've seen in Baroque figures in that they're not biblical, they're not mythological or historical. They are normal everyday women doing their domestic duties as wives and mothers, which again has that harmony, but also a definitely a contrast to what we've seen. Vermeer also likes to use light, which could be an influence from Caravaggio. He likes the use of chiaroscuro to create a dark, ambiguous background and to highlight his subjects and create importance for his subjects. He also likes to use perspective, which are the influences of his Delft friends. Um, he often places things within his paintings to create that perspective, objects that have metaphorical meaning but also create that sort of scientific, um, you know, end of the railroad track type thing that we've seen in our own art classes, um, that perspective that draws to the subject, which I'll describe later when I have a painting actually in front of me. And also moral and philosophical ideas. So again, he has ultimately a concetto or a concept for his paintings 
but they're not as biblical and grand as most Baroque artworks. They're actually focused on the domestic sphere and focused on the subject themselves. The Procurus is one of Vermeer's earlier works done in 1656. It's an oil on canvas work and it now currently resides in the Old Masters Picture Gallery in Dresden, Germany. So this painting is a great example of Vermeer's earlier pieces. It's actually the first of his genre painting. So what we're looking for is contemporary sort of domestic life. I guess in this case, this woman is a prostitute, so not maybe very domestic, but definitely contemporary to Vermeer's world. So again, the Procurus is the prostitute, um, and that woman is pictured in center in those bright, vibrant colors. And in the background is what's known as the mercenary love. So the mercenaries that have come to um, propose the young woman. And actually, Vermeer himself is in this portrait, or he did a self-portrait of himself in the role of the prodigal son. And that's on the far left of the composition. That's actually self-portrait of Vermeer. So we have, again, this contemporary life displayed and this strong contrast between the bright colors of the woman who's seated there and this sort of light that comes from the top left hand side to illuminate those colors and the background you can't really tell what it is but it seems like maybe they're in some sort of hall so you have that sort of ambiguous background and the men as they get farther away sort of recede into a darkness with that shadow across Vermeer's own face um, and again, when you come to the forefront, you get more color, which is definitely an element of Vernier's work. So there's lots of strong influences from Rembrandt. You have that, again, that deep uh, color contrast and the Utrecht school. Um, he derived, actually the work derives from the painting of Dirk van, van Buren, uh, which was in his mother-in-law's collection. So he would have seen a painting that resembled this in his day-to-day -day life, and again, chose to take from that. So we have that chiaroscuro, those deep colors, um, and we have this overall concetto of the contemporary lifestyle in uh, Delft, and we have the influences from earlier paintings. So I felt like I couldn't do a presentation on Vermeer without discussing this painting because it's probably one of his more famous ones and one that you guys probably already know. Um, but it's The Girl with the Pearl Earring. It was done in 1665. It's also an oil on canvas work by Vermeer. And actually, if you're ever on Lakeshore campus, like right off of Granville Station is a big mural of The Girl with the Pearl Earring. I'm not really sure if it's still there because we haven't really been there in a while. But if you have the chance, try to go look for it. Um, the Girl with the Pearl Earring um, now resides the actual painting in, excuse my pronunciation, but Mauritius Museum in The Hague, Netherlands. So what Vermeer is trying to portray here, again, is this domestic genre painting type setting, the woman as a subject. She's sort of um, a harmonious figure. She has that gentle gaze towards the audience, and it's sort of the aesthetic of a serenity. Um, so... We have this sort of realism in this artwork. Again, she's not a mythological creature or a biblical creature. She is just a plain woman staring out into the audience, actually connecting with the audience um, and in sort of a reproachful way. So the sub subject stares out and meets the viewer's gaze and that's sort of audacious in itself, but she's sort of, you know, is reprimanding or her gaze is sort of sharp as well as sort of playful. So one of the authors, Wheelock, um, who is in the resources, actually describes her face as she may reach out as an icon of desire, but sorrow in the element in which she takes shape and from which she is never really freed. So Interpret the gaze as you will, but it's definitely an element of Vermeer's work to engage with the audience in this way and to have such an audacious, audacious woman subject as the uh, primary subject of the painting. Um, so you have that ambiguous gaze. 
you also have that ambiguous background. And there's actually a lot of research done into whether or not this background was intended or it's just a result of time and its blackness, um, just sort of like a clean black background as it might seem, especially in this photo from the internet. Um, but there actually was found to be uh, some different elements in the background, possibly like a curtain um, or definitely some deep greens in the background to go along with that black. So we still have that ambiguous background, even though it seems completely black now, um, which makes the subject even more so um, bright and central to the work of art. And you have that, again, that light that comes in from the top left-hand side to create that chiaroscuro, that dramatic use of shadow and light upon her face that creates that sort of girlish, but also, you know, that desirous, reproachful gaze that she has as she turns back towards the viewer. Um, so all of those elements, again, are kind of shocking element that Vermeer pulls out of his work and um, were kind of shocking at the time. So this is one of my favorite paintings of Vermeer's. It's Woman Holding a Balance, which was made in 1664. And it's also an oil on canvas work. Actually, this one hangs in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. So if anybody lives near there, they could definitely go check it out. So this work in particular, definitely you can see the concept of the domestic sphere. You have the woman as a central subject. You have the light coming in from the left-hand side to illuminate her and the interior setting, which Vermeer is known for. You have her balancing a delicate scale over her vanity or her table within the home. So definitely a domestic scene. And this is also a great example of Vermeer, Vermeer's use of moral and philosophical metaphor within the objects that he places within the painting itself. So I'll point out three different ones that sort of make the overall concept. So first, she's holding a scale in her hands, which we would be very familiar with in that it symbolizes justice. So it's her balancing um, two things you can't really see what it is she is balancing, but she definitely has that delicately, delicately placed in her hand. You have the painting in the background, which is a painting within a painting, um, which I think is actually pretty impressive. Um, and if you can't tell, it's actually the Last Judgment. So you have that biblical sort of reference, that moral reference um, in the background. And then right in front of her, if it's her vanity, there's a bunch of jewelry boxes and what seems like different pearls and jewels and um, materials that are seated in front of her. So the overall concept of this, as she stares at her jewels and her material, and in the background is Jesus and the Last Judgment and her weighing this scale, it's this idea of creating balance in domestic life between material wealth and material earthly pleasures and spiritual wealth and spiritual desires. So the woman in her domestic um, interior, her home, is balancing out these decisions and making these decisions for herself. And unlike the big, grand, Baroque art pieces that we've seen with, that would compel people to um, you know, come back to the Catholic Church or to follow Jesus once again or pray to the um, big sculptures and things, um, we have this sort of daily image, this sort of plain, um, yeah, this plain interior image that you might see in your day-to-day -day life, but you're still making those decisions, and that's how Vermeer um, would like people to interpret it, is that you have a moral and philosophical idea in the painting, but it's also one that his audience could connect with. So this is one of my favorite ones. So on the next slide will be the references I hope that you enjoyed my little presentation on Vermeer, and if you ever have a chance to go to see one of his paintings, I highly recommend them, and I hope that you can see some of the elements that I've described, the woman as a subject, the domestic genre painting, and the use of different influences from Caravaggio and Rembrandt in his color and his light and dark imagery. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and good luck on all of your guys' presentations.